Good morning, everyone. Happy January 5th, Tuesday. And if 2021, or if January is any indication of how 2021 is going to go, it's going to be a very exciting year for cryptocurrencies because just in the first five days, our total crypto market cap, which I follow very, very closely, I follow it in the market cap um, denomination or metric, and it has just exploded. It really has for a long time. All throughout this summer, we were really sitting around 300 where my, where my mouse is. And, you know, we were sitting between 285 up to 386 for a good solid four or five months there. It took all the way until November for us to actually crack the 400 billion mark. And now since November, we have absolutely skyrocketed to 880. So this is my, this along with our Bitcoin dominance is my most important metrics at the moment. And along with Polkadot, just because I'm not into Polkadot projects yet. Morning, everyone. Tao, Greg, Eugene, Mendoza. Hey, everybody. So I just want to note that back in March at our COVID dip, literally our market cap for total cryptocurrency was 150 something billion. And we've just, we had a long period from June all the way to November where it was around 250 to 400 billion. And since then we've skyrocketed. We're ready, in my opinion, for a pullback. Um, but you never know with the cryptocurrency markets, of course. But look at this growth. Just from we've, we hit 600 billion really quickly. We're up to 800, 900 billion. I, I believe CoinGecko says we're at 902 this morning. So really my question is, morning forest, are we going to hit 1 trillion in January? Um, and actually, are we gonna hit 1 trillion cryptocurrency market cap in early January? I personally don't think we are, but I'm curious on your guy, everyone's opinions. Have a look at quickly, look at 24 hours performance while also looking at dominance. Uh, Bitcoin dominance is doing exactly what I want it to do, which is go down. Uh, it looks like it actually hit above 70 yesterday, and we were at 72% uh, dominance there for just a little bit yesterday. Now we've dropped heavily down to 68, so that's exactly what I want to see. I want to see that go back down to 65, 60, and into the 50s. Loop ring. I did want to talk about loop ring today because it is absolutely pumping. Loop ring's up 78.4% just in the last 24 hours. And it's up 200% the last seven days. I think I've got it here ready to go. Here it is. Here's loop ring. So well done to everybody that's been holding, hold, holding their loop ring, um, L, their LRC tokens. Just want to quickly look at this performance. It's one of those tokens on the linear um, graph that goes all the way back to 2017. And is it's really... It was questionable back in 2019 when you look at the linear graph of will this token ever pump again or is it just going to die? And thankfully, it looks like it's pumping again. And then the logarithmic chart gives us a little bit of a better indication that. So well done to all the loop ring holders. I wanted to quickly check their decks actually. There you go. Loop ring 3.0. So very interesting about loop ring. Really quick back to top um, to metrics. Total 100 um, top 100 DeFi coins. We're at 25 billion. So this is brand new uh, atmosphere for us. We've never ever been here before at 25 billion. And here it is. Our biggest 24 hour gamers are Yam, Loop Ring, Idol, Serum. Actually, DeFi is having a wonderful day, which makes sense. Check out. Gas illustration, the quite cool. Morning, Eugene, or J4K. T oh, TX Street, yeah, I did want to check that. And who's the losers in the last 24 hour? DeFi, Dollar, Dow, Ample Forth, Bounce, Cream. Not many losing double digits, but a ton of double digit gainers. Wow, Ave's at 119, might be a nice time to take some profit. Everybody's loving RSR token at the moment, they're up 20%. Hedgic, um, the Hedgic owner this morning, I think Molly, she was quoting that her firm's working at about like 2.5, I think million a month. So looking at like 12 million yearly revenue, she was saying, which is very interesting. But total DeFi market caps at 25 billion, still growing. I am expecting a pullback, but just a small one. I have a quick look at Transaction Street. Excuse me. Yeah, this thing is so cool. It really actually gives a very good explanation and a visual representation of the Bitcoin blockchain versus the Ethereum blockchain. As you can see, the buses are our blocks 
and the little people are all the transactions. And as you can see, the Ethereum um, kind of volume and just activity and the movement of the buses is far faster, faster block speed, more volume. So, and then over here on the left-hand side, you can see all the different applications from, you know, Maker to one inch to Uniswap to one inch down here, synthetics. So we've got all these different applications where on the BTC side, we've really just got Lightning Network and that's about it. I actually really, I love Transaction Street. Very, very cool. All right, moving on to um, a little bit of news today. Oh, I did want to note this little anomaly that um, I don't know if anybody else cares about this, but have a look at stable coins. And like 5.30 yesterday, stable coins dropped down to about 96 cents across the board with Tether, USD, DAI, Binance, Binance USD. The top four all had a major dip. So someone was playing a different game to, to me, Morning Squanch. And I'm actually not quite sure what happened. I'd love for someone smarter than me with more on-chain on -chain knowledge to, to figure out what's going on here. And I'm gonna keep, keep an eye on, see if somebody else reports on this because big arbitrage opportunity yesterday when 22 billion in market cap drops to down to 96 cents. Here it is actually, let me just quickly show you. Here's our last seven day chart. And if I zoom in on this, yesterday at 5.30, it dropped down to 96.2 on January 4th. So I thought that was really interesting. Just goes to show you that this kind of shit can't happen um, once DeFi matures. Or if it does, there's gonna be a lot of arbitragers that are making uh, decent money on it. Now I wanted to note on Uniswap, uh, at the increase in the um, Uniswap or liquidity. For a while there, after the, I think this was the har the harvest of the farm. Morning, Manny. After the far, uh, the harvest attack, um, we were sitting at about 3.36 billion in liquidity for Uniswap. It dropped heavily, obviously, down to 1.6 billion, and then hovered there below two for a while. And just since December, since December, we've scratched 2 billion and now we're back up to 2.87. So watch out. People are adding money back to Uniswap. Um, I wonder if it's indicative of, of something. Ooh, proof of keys. Morning, David. Unsure. Morning, Jack. Proof of keys. Unsure what proof of keys is, but I can definitely look that up. But I'm always interested. Um, I feel like the most exciting thing about crypto at the moment is um, arbitrage opportunities and flash loan attacks. The, oh, there it is, the proof of keys. Oh, we might take a look at that later. Actually, let's have a quick look now and just see what this is. Yeah, the proof of keys was a couple of days ago. On January 3rd, the Bitcoin community hodlers of last resort participate in a proof of key celebration by demanding and taking possession of all Bitcoins held by trusted third parties on their behalf. Interesting. I had no idea this, this was a thing. It's a test of trust. Every year, hodlers celebrate with a test of trust. They test people, exchanges, corporations, other services. Hmm. Very, very cool. I'm gonna probably participate next year, hopefully. So did want to note Uniswap liquidity um, is way up. FutureSwap, I thought this was interesting. FutureSwap V2 is live. So we have 10X leveraging, um, live pricing. Now what's also interesting is this right here. The FutureSwap governance token FST is already live, but it is, is and intended to remain non-transferable and therefore valueless. So this keeps governance in the hands of those who use the protocol and holding those tokens also has some fee reductions on the platform. So this token issuance strategy is actually a lack of liquidity and saying, okay, we're not gonna give any liquidity for the SFT token to begin with so that we can only have it in the holders, hands of users who then can't transfer it. I believe that's what they're talking about. Um, I think, De where is it? Mr. DeFi Dad, he was pretty pumped on this. Um, if it's true, it's the most interesting development in DeFi tokenized governance in the last year. And he's quoting this um, FST, which is gonna remain non-transferable and therefore valueless, which I think is a, a really interesting concept. Because um, I've always thought, you know, you need liquidity on the on your very first day of token issuance. And you know what, if, if, if FutureSwap um, already has a product and already has a community, maybe you don't need liquidity, you know, the first couple of weeks. 
But another thing that's interesting is um, DeFi Prime was laughing at him because another DeFi project in quotes, because it says here, future swap is currently not serving your region, which is a really great point. Morning, Robin. Morning, Jared. Which is a really great point that if future swap is region based, are you truly decentralized? And the answer is no. So any organization that is regionally restricted or geographically restricted, excuse me, isn't true DeFi or truly decentralized in probably in, um, you know, purist opinions. And actually, and then it was interesting, Bantig replied, and what if it's phishing for low hanging fruit engagement so people freak out and deploy mirror images, the IPFS one. Um, so then they were trying to find FutureSwap's open source UI on GitHub, which it doesn't have. So kind of two basic premises of a decentralized organization is um, no geographical restrictions and also open source UI on GitHub. Probably the biggest news of yesterday was the OCC news. Um, here it is. The US federal regulator says banks can conduct payments using stable coins. So here's the actual um, news, news release, which is titled Federally Chartered Banks and Thrifts May Participate in Independent Node Verification Networks and Use Stablecoins for Payment Activities. So another, way to, another term for blockchains are Independent Node Verification Networks. And this is just massively, massively bullish news. So banks can now use um, Banks can conduct, can conduct payments using stable coins. And this was from the Office of the Comptroller of Currencies, the OCC, this is in the US. So big news there, probably the biggest news of yesterday. Ah, for the cover token holders, um, there is a new cover token, so I just wanted to quickly mention that. Um, if you held cover token before the attack, I think they took a snapshot and you're entitled to new cover tokens, so they are gonna make you whole, which is nice. But cover's been through a lot of crap. Cover used to be the safe token, and then I think the safe two token, now the cover token. Um, and they've just been through a lot of a, a lot of issues. So I'm not, it's making me bearish on, on cover token, but at least they made their, their users whole. At least, hopefully, they made their users whole. We'll see how fair it is. Yeah, there you go, Forrest. I thought you might have changed your opinion on cover. <laughs> So I'm, I'm leaning with you, Forrest. I'm kind of over cover. Um, I don't own any anymore. And I probably won't buy back in unless they do some pretty exciting things. We won't talk about XRP too much, but Grayscale has removed XRP from their DLC, or what is it, their digital large cap fund. We could build a much better digital large cap fund. Look at XRP was removed. Um, no other assets qualified for inclusion. The below table highlights the DLC's fund's weight weightings as of January 4th. So they've got 81% in Bitcoin, 15.9% in Ethereum or in ETH, 1.1 in Bitcoin Cash and 1.4 in Litecoin. So it's absolute trash um, ETF in my opinion, just shocking. So that's Grayscale, we won't participate, but XRP was removed. That's all I really wanted to know. And just to trash on Grayscale a little bit, because that's fun. Oh, good. All right, Greg, you're holding your cover. That's good. To, that's good to know. Yeah, Robin, I had a look at Zenfin. I can't get on board yet. I, I, I don't use it, and I haven't really seen anything that excites me too much. Oh, good for us. We'll have a look at PIS later. I've had multiple, Robin, I've had multiple looks at, at, at Zenfin, and people, people do seem to be excited about it. I just, I haven't been able to use it. Um, we've got a few people that are fighting, instead of Zenfin, they're fighting Finson. Uh, the financial, what does that stand for again? Um, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, FinCEN. Um, they had a comment window for their new stablecoin act, and I think it was only like 15 days of an open comment window, which is extremely short. People were complaining that they're trying to push through legislation that's hasty. And as the FinCEN comment window closes, I believe it closed yesterday, um, on the crypto wallet rule comes to a close, uncertainty on path forward remains. So it did, it looks like the deadline for public comments on the proposed crypto wallet regulation ended just last night. Now, what's even more interesting um, is that, excuse me, A16Z, Coinbase intend to challenge FinCEN's proposed crypto wallet rules in court 
should it become law. So we've got one of the, probably the best venture capitalists in the world, um, also with the first organization that's gonna, crypto organization that's gonna IPO. Um, they're both gonna challenge FinCEN rules in court if it becomes law. So that's really bullish that they're fighting for our, what are they called those um, custody wallets. Who else is fighting is Coinbase and Square. So also Jack Dorsey is joining in the fold and saying he will uh, rally against the FinCEN's proposed rules. There it is. So some of the biggest crypto companies in the world uh, have opposed FinCEN's hopes for crypto regulation. So that's really good to see. We've got A16Z, Coinbase, Square. And I think once you have those names, you'll probably have a few more jump on and um, oppose those rules too. Got the block. Oh yeah, here's a... <clears throat> here's a price um, here's a Bitcoin um, price estimate from J one of JP Morgan's strategists don't know if we care about JP Morgan's opinions but we do because they have far more information than us even if they're uh, traditional finance they do have far more information even on cryptocurrencies than, than, than we do at least about Bitcoin I don't know about all, probably not about all coins Tao, you took your initial cap out of cover when it did its first um, 2x. Good man. Ooh, Polka cover, IDO on the 21st. Thank you, Manny. We're gonna, we'll get on on that one. Here's a look at my portfolio on the right-hand side. Here's a lot of my portfolios up, actually, which is really great. Elastos, it's a... Um, is anybody else bullish on Elastos? Elastos, anyone? I freaking love Elastos. They're playing a 50-year game while everyone else is playing a five-year game. Um, so Bitcoin price could hit 146,000. I'm gonna start to document um, these different price calls from all these different organizations, I think. I think that's a pretty good one. I'm looking at about 3.5 trillion as my top this year for, for, for Bitcoin. So I gotta figure out what that is for prices. But I'm, I'm looking at um, about 3.3 trillion is, is the time. Above 3 trillion, it will probably be my sale mark for Bitcoin. Moving along with news. This is interesting. The Bitcoin mining machine shortage worsens as Bitmain sells out. So Bitmain, I believe, is one of the largest, if not the largest. Here it is. Even though the leading Bitcoin mining manufacturer, Bitmain, doubled prices to capitalize on overwhelming demand resulting from the surge in the price of Bitcoin, it still pre-sold three months of inventory in a few weeks. So Bitcoin, Bitmain is the leading Bitcoin mining manufacturer. They doubled their price um, and they're still sold out with pre-sales into the next three months. So majorly bullish. This is really interesting. Um, this is a bit more um, deep crypto news, altcoin news, but Curve Finance today said that you can finally stake ETH pool with Lido Finance, which is an ETH2 staker, is up. So you can teleport between ETH1 and ETH2 at any time, which I think is really cool. So the Curve has partnered with Lido Curve to give you, and let me go here. Here it is. On Curve, you can take your ETH and turn it into STETH. So I believe that's STETH. Um, that would be ETH2 based on Lido. So have a look if you do want to get some of your ETH um, between ETH and ETH, ETH1 and ETH2. I don't really have any need for this at the moment, but I thought that was interesting. So here's another ETF. I know our community loves ETFs. Um, here's the YPI. And the YPI now looks like they have an APY bounce, which I didn't really understand. This is out of, this is from yesterday, or this was from last night or overnight. So there's a sushi bounce from Cream.Finance lending to sushi swap staking, currently earning 46%. So the cumulative APY for YPI is 24%. So not only do you participate in the token appreciation of your ETF, um, that is the YPI, but it looks like you get a cumulative APY of a 24%. So don't quite understand everything there, but as you can see, PiDAO's got, here, here is PiDAO. Let me, let me plot PiDAO and YPI. Morning, Ian. Robin, you can't say anything about Lastos, don't know enough. 
and Greg Shield DOA hard fork from Cover Airdrop. Hmm. Here's the here's YPI, and I wanted to know they've got about 10 million now in total value locked in their beta. Here is the Y Earn ecosystem, at least from what they say: Sushi, YFI, Keeper, Cream, Acro, and Pickle. So only there's only about 240,000 in there but with a total APY of about 25%. So pretty cool. We can build something just like this and even better. Wanted to note Kylan. Um the Kylan network is tokenless right now, but we'll have a token in the future. Um, it's building a cross-chain platform powering the data economy for Polkadot. So it's a data play within the Polkadot ecosystem. And if I come down here, they do have, let me zoom in. They do have the KFL token, is the native token of the Kylan network, which will play the role of governance and other duties. So it's necessary to secure and power the decentralized data network. So Kylan is probably a comparable to our ocean network um, and others on the Ethereum blockchain. Now, but do note, if you note up here, there is no official sale of Kylan, so please be aware of scams. There is no KFI token out there that's live yet, but we're gonna keep a track of this one uh, because it will be soon and I wanna participate. Here it is. Here's ICO drops. If you haven't seen ICO drops before, good place to check on future ICOs. Uh, we can add this to the, to the pre-sale website as well. But the token sale is coming soon, so we'll keep up to date on the Kylan token issuance. Oh yes, so Fura Combo released a token last night, or, or yesterday, actually, December 29th. And what I thought was pretty cool, um, phase one is their token distribution. They wanted to find a token launch platform, and pretty much what they're doing is using a balancer pool. So they're using a balancer um, liquidity bootstrapping pool, an LBP. And that is a smart pool that changes its weight over time to create a more fair launch mechanism. So if you wanted to launch a token, you can use a balancer LPB to do that. And that's what they're doing. So for a combo has their combo token now. Um, if you don't know for a combo, they're a flash loan building website and also pretty much like a DeFi building blocks website. So for a combo has a token launch on December 29th. And now just yesterday or today, this morning, they are announcing for a combo transactions mining program. So the program will last for two months starting on January 15th. So if you do use the for a combo website, you'll earn combo tokens, which come January 15th, you can transaction mine with. There it is. The core value of this transaction mining program is very simple. You use for a combo, you get combo tokens. So really like their issuance here is that pretty much use for a combo to do some trades, you'll get some combo tokens. Um, the combo, the cash tag for for a combo is combo. It is um, C-O-M-B-O. -O. And I don't know if we'd be able to find it yet, Probably, well, it should be on Etherscan somewhere, I guess. Looks like they've only distributed 4% of the initial the initial supply, of the total supply at initial launch. But that's another another airdrop, is for a combo users will be getting combo tokens. Moving on, I wanted to have a look at, actually we'll take a look at um, this one. This is the PHA token. I don't know anything about this, to be honest. But this is the FALA token. Literally nothing for sale until mainnet token launch and token swaps followed by unlocks of 20% every six months. That's interesting. So the Fala network's not gonna have any sales until the mainnet launch, so we could get in very first day and we could see a big, big jump in price as they unlock those tokens, 20% for six months. So what was the other one? We've got um, Kylan network and we've also got the Fala network who we're gonna keep an eye on and is hopefully actually someone says they just bought Fala here please how can you buy you can buy on Bilexy and MXC exchange <clears throat> interesting so yeah Fala network 
wanted to note that on DeFi Pulse, uh, C Vault's up there now. So Core Finance finally made it onto onto DeFi Pulse, which makes sense. And the total value locked, um, it has one of the best charts I've ever seen. Look at this total value lock chart. It just keeps going up. So total value locked right now <coughs> is about 55 million. And yeah, let's actually have a look at um, total value locked for all of DeFi. We're sitting at about 18 billion, so nearly at all time highs or at all time highs. And 55 million for core puts them down at 22nd. So, wow, DeFi Pulse is, we've got 57 people on DeFi Pulse now. XFT from CoinGecko, Offshift. Ooh, I haven't heard of Offshift before. We've got a nice early coin, up 75%. Um, about two point, about twenty five percent of the tokens are issued, of ten million, and we got a market cap of about four million. Interesting. Token's been around for about thirty days. Really like the chart. We had an initial token price of fifty eight cents. Really good pump. Really solid pump. All the way up to four fifty four. Now we've had the um, we're back into the trough of disillusionment here. Back to fifty cents, and now we've just jumped up to a dollar eighty one. Really good chart. So be careful of this 78, 75% jump just today, but still still early days at 4 million. Here's the website. Offshift is a cryptographically private offshore storage and DeFi protocol on Ethereum, and the first dual-sided public-private protocol to be built entirely on a public blockchain. Cool, looks really, really professional. Looks very, very well done. Off Offshift has two native assets, XFT and, all, and also ZK assets. Cool. Looks like ZK assets, they'll probably do what everyone does, is do ZK USD. Yep. And then they'll do ZK assets include ZK USD, BTC, ETH, and then any other assets they want to do in the future. Wow. Really missed this one. This is huge. Let's see if their white paper looks legit which of course it does very, here's their um, table of contents, looks like it's about 13 pages. Potential use cases, maintaining stable coin price. Cool. Off shift looks really exciting. Let me, let me slap this, um, let me slap this in here into the chat. Good call Forrest, I'm gonna keep an eye on that one. Um, Actually, let's check the markets and see where we can buy it. It's on Uniswap, so just head over to Uniswap or Balancer or One Inch. Honestly, looking at this market, actually, being a liquidity provider for smaller tokens that pump on Balancer or One Inch with such low volume or with such low liquidity could be an interesting thing. Now, HTR, CoinGecko, I think this is the Hawthor. I'm always curious about this one. We don't know market cap. We don't know circulating or total supply on both CoinGecko and Coin, yeah, and on Coin market cap. Then if we go to the web, here's the performance, been out for about 30 days. And it's been pumping actually the last couple of days. Yeah, we're up 113% just the last seven days. We're above token issuance price of about 20 cents, and we're, I think we're near, we're pretty much at all time highs. We're at all time highs right now. So this is a scalable and easy to use blockchain for digital assets. My only thing is you have to download the Hawthor wallet, so I don't like that. But what are they? They're highly scalable, easy to use, no fees, atomic swaps, nano contracts. So it looks like a private or public blockchain that wants to build a DEX of tokens, extend ERC's token capabilities, everyone's doing that. So it's interesting, it's hard to figure out what they're doing without actually downloading their Hawthor wallet. Have you guys downloaded, Squanchy and Tao, have you guys downloaded the Hawthor wallet? Is it legit? Might have to check that out. Here's their blockchain explorer, very simple. Let's check their tokens. 
Wow, a lot of crazy tokens in here. Interesting. Keep an eye on Hawthor, too. Only 71 Hawthor addresses. That's a really good point. Um, thank you, Forrest, because when we don't have a circulating supply, and we don't have a market cap, that's probably a very good metric is how many people own this thing. So we could extrapolate that somehow, get a 71 Hawthor tokens, check the average number of tokens per address, come up with some kind of market cap. But you'd hope this thing would be under 10 million. You really do. Um, oh yeah, the initial token exchange offering of ZKS is on the gate.io exchange, which I haven't used, but it um, looks like ZK Swap Official is going to have their own token. And I think someone in our community um, was already earning ZK tokens um, based on working on the testnet. So well done. Morning, Colorado Rocky. Colorado, you're you're surprised with Hawthor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I, I have to wait on that price increase. But could be interesting. Now quickly we've got a few more news stories. Oh, this was a very interesting organization. Verto.exchange. This is a decentralized token exchange um, for Airweave profit sharing tokens. So if we come down to read more. What are PSTs? I'm on Verto.exchange, which I just dropped into the um, the chat. Let me zoom in. There we go. Profit sharing tokens or PSTs are a new incentivization mechanism for the open web that allows developers to earn a stream of micro dividends for the duration their application is used. Amazing. In order for PSTs to have value, however, they need to be able to be exchanged for other PSTs or AR. This is where Verto comes in. So we're trading micro dividends a stream of micro dividends from your basic platform um, converting them to pst's and then pst's converting to ar using verto so really cool i think it's actually exchanged now <clears throat> excuse me to sign in just drag and drop your airweave key file to this page pretty cool little ui ux there um so to sign in i need to just give them the mer their my them my airweave key file which i don't have so i can create an airweave wallet this looks really interesting so have a look at verto exchange um just a cool concept of profit sharing tokens it really is jared that's why we got our community this pace moves so fast i'm going to do some mapping later today actually and update our crypto map but this is the whole reason we have this community um and i think we need to do a better job of um having calendars, and I know that Forrest, you wanna start a pre-sale um, kind of document or analyzation sheet, and that would really help if we could streamline this. Ooh, this place is pretty cool. So have a look at um, defiyield.info. I wanted to quickly show you defiyield.info, because if you come down, it didn't work for me yesterday, but they also got a gas cost tracker, so you just like, fees.wtf you can come down here and, and see how much you spend on gas fees let me actually see if it works for me it didn't work for me yesterday let me quickly go to DeFi. <coughs> agree uh. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Agreed, Forrest. Um, and I don't think pre-sales are going away, especially with new blockchains coming out. Polkadot ecosystems just starting to fire up. Here it is. So look at me. I've spent 2.799 ETH in gas over 376 transactions. I've got 33, 31 failed transactions, 55% average way price. To me, that seems high. It really does. So it looks like DeFi yield.info forward slash gas cost tracker will do the same thing as fees.wtf. I'm curious if um, how your guys' stats are. Did anyone have a much lower transactions average price than me of 55 guay? That seems really high. I wish that would be more like 40 or 30, but oh well. Plus a lot of this 2799 ETH was spent back when it was 200, 300, $400. So this total gas spendings doesn't mean much to me. 
but that is my opportunity cost. If I'd have done no transactions and held all that ETH, I could have 2,900, but I think from all my Deegan trading, I, I would probably have more. So but have a look at DeFi Yield because they've got a pretty slick little website here um, that they have an investing dashboard coming soon. So this place, this place is gonna continue to build. All right, moving on. There we go. Hey, 72 Gway, Greg, well done. Tao, you're sitting about 35, 40, good job. Um, I wanted to introduce, I wanted to have a look at, this is actually from Forrest. So thank you, Forrest, for dropping in this. And it looks like introducing Chain API, the integration I platform for the API3 ecosystem. There we go. Interesting. And let's see if we can have a website here. Here it is, the Blockchain API Gateway. Cool. So wait, how's this connected? Um, this is the integration platform for the API3 ecosystem. Cool. All right, we'll keep an eye on API3 and Chain API. Oh, I did want to check this out. I wanted to check out Medicar, Medicartel's um, 2020 recap. Medicartel is one of a very early DAO that invests in a lot of DLT, Web3 businesses, crypto startups. So let's have a quick look and see if we can um, get a gleam out of what's going on with Medicartel. Um, what happened in 2020? Looks like they had an ecos uh, the ecosystem here. I think this might be a lot of typing. Well, let me drop this Medium link into our chat this morning. Have a look, because I think this Meta Cartel will be, um, here we go, a wealth of knowledge. In 2020, they distributed a total of 15 grants, but with a focus on funding, supporting early stage DAOs. So here we go, we've got Signal DAO, Snapshot, Overlay, Boardroom, Iron Finance, Meta Gamma Delta, Meta Clan, Meta Fuel, Fest DAO, Loft Radio, a lot of these, I think, oh, there's a few that have been shelved, but um, a few, a lot of these are not are tokenless or pre-token. Dow Square, Umbra, Primal Portal, Tree Whaler Dow, Mindful. I haven't heard of a lot of these. Llama Finance, I heard, of, so that's interesting. And here's Meta Cartel Family Projects. They've got Venture Dow, which sounds like it's a venture capital Dow. They've got Meta Factory. They've got Raid Guild, Dow House. Oh, good, and that's about it. So come in here, you'll find a lot of good information. I wanted to look at, within their venture Dow, who are their investments. Their investments are here. Let me just chop those in. Always like to keep track of what VCs are doing, um, especially um, modern day Dow VCs and you don't get much better than Meta Cartel. So I'm gonna dig into this more later, uh, but I wanted to share that with you because that's the Meta Cartel recap for 2020. I think that's a wealth of information for us. Oh yeah, let's have a look at Polk Insure. Ooh, good day to buy. We're down 16% on a $2 million coin, wow. Only 80,000 supply, gotta get into Polka Insure today. It's a buy day for Polka Insure. Um, let me drop this into the chat. Let's have, we'll have a quick look at their value props. But we got a $2 million organization here. Looks like nearly 80% of the tokens are issued or 70%. And decent trading volume, 400,000. And we've only got 2 million in market cap. It's only been trading for about 24 hours. Oof, oof. So we started at 32. We had a nice little bump up yesterday with some FOMO up to 48. We're back down, really, really quick cycle, back down to 33. So we could see this drop more or or not. Yeah, Forrest, we love paid. Royal Finance, I'm kinda, that one, I'm skeptical on Royal right now. I, th I know we had a look at that one a couple of days ago or yesterday. Excuse me. 
trying to get to polka insurance.finance. Let's see if their um, medium page works. Well, that's a bit slow for me. Let's check Chrome really quickly because uh, I do want to check out Polka Insure. We're only 24 hours into this token issuance. Nah, too, too slow for me. Sorry about that. So interesting that Polka Insure's very early days and price is down, very low circulating supply. Website's not working for me, so I'm going to try that again later before I buy. But this could be a really, really interesting token that we have far more asymmetric information knowledge than the rest of the world on. Far more. And if I actually put this into Etherscan, I wonder how many token holders we have of the, um, the PIS token. Here it is, the PIS token on Etherscan. We've only got 378, 79 people in the world that hold the 80,000 PIS tokens. That's such a good metric for us, the number of holders. Should really think about connecting, getting connection to the Etherscan API if it's free. So that's Polka Insure Finance. And actually here it is, the, um, the Medium page finally loaded. And it was six, six days ago they introduced Polka Insure, the next generation of DeFi insurance protocol powered by Polkadot. Cool, so we've got insurance on Polkadot, bullish. We had a new um, Medium article from everyone's favorite man in Ethereum, Andre Kranje. So I wanted to quickly drop that in, and just because that's noteworthy. And he's bringing collateralized stable yield credit. So they've released their third iteration of stable credit as they continue to build upon the protocol. Um, there's some interesting observations. Aggregated yields, trading fees, interest-free protocol loans, um, impairment loss protection, automated positive sum liquidations. Cool, so they're launching um, collateralized stable yield credit. So Wiren continues to build. A few other stories and a few other organizations it looks like. We've got the yacht, yacht.finance. Looks like it's a mobile <clears throat> application and it's all in one Y optimization application. they have got the Y platform, the Y protocol, the YOP token. They're really hitting this Y thing a little too hard for my liking. But, and actually if I go back to the Y token, look at this breakup. Oof, I'm kind of out on YOP already. They've got 15% for marketing, get out of here. The only marketing you need is an airdrop to us and I'll shill it all day long. So 15% to marketing makes no sense. Um, private sale, don't like private sales, that's 12%. Team gets 10%. So that's too bad. And I'm not, I'm not sure about you guys. I'm not the biggest fan of mobile crypto transactions. I'm a big desktop user, big computer user of, um, of crypto and probably as the UI, the UX gets better, I'll do more on, on mobile. But at the moment, uh, I'm kind of out on mobile. It does look like a fancy little mock-up though. I, just, I don't know if I like their strategy of trying to be the Y platform of Polkadot when, I'm sorry, we've already got the Y Alliance. Why Y of Five's already taken that, um, that marketing strategy. Actually, better be a public team. As always, for all Polkadot projects, we have a very public team that has 50 people on it that's decentralized. Looks like they're all throughout Europe. So I'm out on Yacht for a while. Another one that someone found or that I found was Tixel, T-I-X-L. Yeah, I think, I think ADA will be big in 2021. I don't think, I don't think ADA's stopping anytime soon. So here's TIXL. This is a DeFi ecosystem made in Germany. Um, and here's their, here's their value prop. Tixel's interoperable layer one network enables any asset, including BTC, to be transferred instantly and with zero to almost zero costs. So you create a wallet, looks like you use Tixel, 
and um, it's they're solving payments and interoperability. Cool. So Tixel looks like they're going the more like private permission blockchain route, but thought that was interesting. Another one that has been absolutely pumping that I don't know what, what to do with or how to wrap my head around is GNY. Don't know if anyone has any strong opinions on GNY. The reason that I mention it um, is because it just continues to pump. One year it's up 500%, seven days it's up 252%. And actually, there you go. Let me go to the logarithmic chart for our max. It's actually, their, their growth recently is probably a little stupid. So be wary of this one. Um, it was trading back at 0 0.003 cents um, earlier this year. Now we're at 60 cents. So I want to keep an eye on GNY, but it looks like it might be overpriced at the moment. And just for everyone, everyone's knowledge, here is GNY.io. Pronounced Genie. Began with a patent pending advanced machine learning system and the desire to decentralize it. So it looks like they're wanting to decentralize a machine learning mechanism. Polka insurers not related to Polkadot? Really? Polka Insurance Finance. Here it is. Polka Insurance is a decentralized P2P insurance marketplace on Polkadot ecosystem. Oh, Polka Insure. Oh, yeah, that's the same one. Yeah, I don't know what you mean, Manny. Looks like it's um, partnered with Polkadot. Now, that was GNY. I think my, oh yeah, yield. I wanted to have a look at the yield token, which has been around for about 14 days. So it's yield.credit. Let me throw this into the chat. Here's yield. The future of DeFi lending is here. Yield is a DeFi lending app with fixed guaranteed interest rates, love fixed interest rates. Lending and borrowing on the platform is individualized, not pooled. Lenders earn guaranteed rates while borrowers maintain healthy loans and repay on time, earn YLD. Cool. So be a lender and if you'll earn YLD scores or YLD tokens. Let me go to Chrome really quickly and show you their application. Hopefully this loads decently quickly. There it is, so you can lend or you can borrow. So if I wanted to lend some assets, I could press lend, I could make an offer, look at requests. If they come with a Robin Hood, I think they might have gone with a Robin Hood. Um, application. I hope this loads decently quickly. If not, I'm going to bring this up tomorrow. It literally looks like it's a, it's a mobile phone on a desktop. Very cool. So wanted to share that with you. That's um, yield. This is the, excuse me, here it is. This is the yield token, the YLD token. It's about 2.5 million fixed, in, fixed um, lending, decentralized fixed lending. Yeah, that's pretty much it. But token performance has been very, very, actually, really, really good entry point. We've been around 14 days. We started at 10 bucks. We had a pump up to 40 bucks, our typical uh, FOMO pump after the public token issuance. And now we've had a major, major um, kind of retracing back down to 10 bucks. So probably a really great time to get into YLD. Oh yeah, I wanted to get people's opinion. El Crypto Chapo says he loves IYF so much. So wanted to see if anybody has strong opinions on the y IYF um, token. I think this is a really early one, so just be careful on this one. And I think that's actually it for today. Wonderful.
having a quick look at just total DeFi. Wanted to quickly take a look at some some of these big big gainers. Stellar's up 23% on the news that Ukraine's using them. Avalanche continues to grow. Um, the DeFi, the Ethereum and Polkadot competitor, probably a pretty good idea just to get some Avalanche. If they continue to build, they're only a, they're about 320 million. And if they become a successful smart contract platform, you're, you're definitely a billion dollar organization. Theta Network has stopped its little de uh, short-term decrease and it's, it's pumping again. Well done to all the Theta holders. It's above two bucks now. Good for them. Elrond, just a lot of really good performers. Actually, I wanted to check um, the top 200 tokens and see who's our best performers in the top 200. Or the, yeah, top two, top one, 100 through 200. Looks like it's um, Parsic, Utrust, Serum, Hedgic, Syntropy, which is NOIA, Secret, and Funfair. Interesting. And then over the last 24 hours, Basia Share. Here's our here's our losers. Keeper. Keeper's been having some short-term issues, that's for sure. Now let's check 201 through 300 really quickly. Here's the top 201 through 300 coins and our top 24-hour performance is Erotix, Coin Metro, Elastos, YF Link, and DeFi Pulse. And top seven, top seven day performance is LX, LCX, and Axiom. Wanted to have a look at Latentry, blockchain identity management platform. This is interesting. Thank you, Mendoza. There is no official public sale for Litany, Latendry. Please be aware of scams, fraud, and report. Awesome. So we're pre-token. It's built with a, building a user-centric world with blockchain, a network supporting cross-chain aggregated identities. Cool. Built on Substrate, ready for Polkadot. This is great. Cool. Looks like another organization that's bringing identity-based networks and tools. That's probably the best way to put this. Now here, let me, here you go Forrest, here's the, here's the link to the Polka Insure Medium article. I think that's probably the best information we have, unfortunately, from six days ago. I don't think there's any more information on, on Medium at least. They've only got the one, um, the one article. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, build a user centric. So that's pretty interesting. Latenti. And then, oh, this is awesome. Must show you um, coin tools. Please take a look at coin tool. Someone's building this and it's absolutely epic. I just saw, I found this on Gitcoin this morning. The, the creator of this was on Gitcoin and saying, hey, please give me feedback. So I wanted to check this out. Number one, it just looks like a normal kind of analytics blockchain explorer. You can connect your wallet. So it is a dApp that you can connect your wallet. So that's really cool. Number two, we can come over to here to, the, to each different blockchain and they've got drop down menu of what you can do with each, each different blockchain. So I can come to Ethereum. Look at this and create an ERC20 token. I can also ETH bat wallet, uh, batch wallet generation. So I can enter a number of wallets that I wanted to create. Here's an ETH unit converter. Um, and if I have 10 Tether, it looks like 10 Tether is a ton of GUI. And so they've got, there's the GUI. They've got an ETH unit converter. Um, if I go to the Bitcoin blockchain, they've got BTC batch balances, BTC unit unit converter. So one BTC, there's a bunch of Satoshis. BTC asset at, uh, address generator, which I may want to use in the future just to create a BTC address quickly. They've also got this for Polkadot, XMR for pretty much wallet generations, TRX. They've even got an airdrop section. So if I wanted to come in here and go to one inch 
and copy my account over to one inch. I can put this in here and look, boom, check. Great, check number of one inch you can claim and I can claim my one inch here. But if I go to the ion check and I type in my, um, my address, it says, boom, juvenile, you are not eligible for the ion airdrop. So we have the ion check, the one inch check, and then the InstaDAP addresses to see if you're eligible for those airdrops. We've also got, what else do we have? That's pretty much about it. But pretty much, I'm just very excited for a coin, a MetaMask connected Web3 enabled wallet where I can actually interact with these blockchains um, kind of through a graphical user interface, a GUI, rather than through code. So have a look at coin tools, super bullish. I think it's absolutely amazing. And I'm actually gonna play around with some of this Ethereum stuff later today. So that's probably it for today, everyone. A look into Rose Token from Colorado Rocky while we quickly go back to um, CoinGecko here. And the partnerships investors, the page gets deeper when you click on it, also possibly a good buy range. Just wondering what other things others think on this one. So a quick look at Rose, the Oasis Network. We're about five cents a token, $70 million market cap, $470 million fully diluted market cap. Token's been around for about 30 days. And yeah, we did have an, we, we've had a few small pumps up and down, quite an oscillating performance. And yeah, looking like a decent entry point, even though we've had some short-term growth here. I've dug into this one a few times and I still don't really get it. Um, the Oasis Network is a privacy enabled blockchain platform for open finance and responsible data economy. Yeah, I've been here, I've been to this web page probably three or four times and every, every time it's a little unforgettable. They've been working since 2018 Yep, scalable, scalable, reliable, versatile. So looks like they got a decent list of node operators, developers, select investors, and really good list of investors actually. So yeah, I'm always just, it's very forgettable for me. Like, what do I do with this? But it looks like it's a longer term investment for sure, whenever we're talking about a privacy enabled blockchain platform. So hey, I'm probably not getting in on this one just because of opportunity cost and because of this valuation of 468 million. I can just compare this kind of thing to, to all of these different Polkadot projects. And we could have Polkadot projects that are worth less than 50 million um, that have, that get me a little bit more excited than this. So don't, be, don't, mean, don't mean to be negative on this one because it looks like they do have um, two explorers. So it looks like their blockchain's live, which is no, nothing to sneeze at. It's just I'm not I'm struggling to wrap my head around it and how I'll use it, but maybe it's not for me. Hopefully, it's maybe it's for enterprises. And I could run it out really quickly. Yeah, I'm sure if the more I I dug into this, it would be quite a big ecosystem. Cool. So pretty much, yeah, to kind of finalize for today, our um, total crypto market cap sitting at about almost a little under 900 billion. Will it hit 1 trillion in early January? My opinion is no. And I think we'll have our retracement around, you know, 930 billion. And I think we'll drop down into the seven, eight hundreds for, for, for a little bit in January. And then we're gonna smash through um, 1 trillion in total crypto market cap come either late January, or early February. That's my tip. Um, and Forrest, I would love to build something with you on three commas. Wait, paid, paid just finished their pre, their pre-sale. I wanna get into paid so badly. I'm so bullish on the paid network. Whitelist public sale. I swore I did this already. Oh, cool, I haven't done this. Cool, I might do this later. Thank you, man. Who was that? 
Thank you, Mendoza. I'm gonna have a look at that. Someone's mentioning idols up today. Thank you. Oh, second paid on the ninth. Thank God. Got to get it on the paid network. Yep, idle tokens up big. Someone was just asking about if that was a good entry point late last week. So well done. I think that might have been you, Forrest, or somebody else. Let's have a look at the chart for idle. Still a good entry point for idle. Um, the idle token went all the way up to eleven or twelve dollars. So we really need a name for this chart. We really need a name for this pattern of token issuance, big big pump, and then a retracing back into reasonability, and then our entry point here after that pump. We see this you this group. I mean, for those that have been here the last couple of weeks, we've seen this same chart probably a good twelve to twenty times now, and I'm not exaggerating. I've seen this thing ten to twenty times. Token issuance, FOMO pump a realistic and understandable retracement back down near to token issuance price. And then if the token's good, it'll pump again. We really, I, need a, I need to come up with a name for this, for this pattern. So that's it um, for me today, but I'll see you guys in the Discord. I think it's gonna be a big day. I'm gonna be grinding all day on research today. So I'll see you in the Discord and um, happy crypto investing. Please give me a like before you log off. So hit me with the like button and um, happy crypto investing. Talk later, everyone. See you, team.